morning guys so it's another nice sunny day not as windy today which is amazing for my pool cleaning efforts but uh having a chance out we're gonna go down to the playground hello mate nope good boy buddy good boy chance through chance through good boy well done good boy my good boy yeah, hi, hi. We're going to get chance down. We're going to go to the playground and I've got a new pump that I'm trialling to maintain the uh, cleanliness of the dam. And also when we treat the dam, if we get a long dry spell, we can turn that water into nice clear water. Good boy. Good dog, true. Test out, see if it's got enough juice, and then play with the dogs, with the hose. See how many dogs want to play around with the hose in the dam. So, bringing Chansey along. Not sure how he's going to handle the hose, but I know a few of the dogs love jumping up and uh, attacking the water. So, let's have some fun in the sun. Right, Righto, guys, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, I see you. Good boy, Chance. Good boy, mate. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. You're waiting for me to throw something. What about this? Will this suffice? Will this suffice? Hello, mate. Yeah, let's go. Turn on this pump.
Hello, Freddo. Hello, big fella. Oh, boy. Oh. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Good girl, Miss Violet. Good girl. So I'm not sure if everyone noticing, but a lot of our dogs don't have colours on. Rosie, Matilda, Miss Violet, Miss Red, Shadow. Who else? Joey didn't have one, I don't know, put one on this before. And reason being is because these are all the dogs that play with Miss Red and Miss Violet. They're little collar destroyers. And we um, <coughs> just replaced Maggie's one too, because Maggie didn't have one. And they're all being chewed up. I've watched the way that they play with each other. And the two little staffy sisters have started to really hone into those colours and uh, not let go. So cheeky little girls. Might have to interrupt that behaviour. Oh, and Freddo, you don't have a collar either. No collar for you, mate. Hey? Good one. What you got there, Chance? Oh, a duck toy. Hey. It is just a toy. It's not a real duck. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Hello, mate. You look waterlogged. Hey. Diving under to get that ball. Good boy, mate. 
Good boy. Miss Red, leave me alone. Good girl. Miss Red, good girl. Nope. <laughs> She's fucking got that stuff. Nope. Good girl. Can't it out. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good boy, Bandit! Hi, mate! Hi, buddy! Hi, mate! Good boy! Good boy! Hi, mate! Good boy. Hello, mate. How you been, buddy? Hey? How you been, mate? You like that duck toy there, don't you, mate? Hey, you like that one? You're being very gentle with it. The staffies would have destroyed that, ripped all the fluff out by now. Hey, doing very well, mate. Good boy, Chance. Good boy, mate. Good boy, buddy. Running with the pack, mate, eh? Ooh, good job. Good dogs. That one will get destroyed in 35 milliseconds. Nope. The two deaf ones. What am I going to do about that? All I can do is stare and be like, if I look at me. Barney. Bad of it. Good job. Good boy, mate. Hey, good boy. Good boy. Oh, Miss Violet, you've nailed him. Turned him inside out. Good girl.
I just looked uh, to my right and there's Bandit. <laughs> Did he get dropped off this morning? Yeah. Right. I must have like just in my peripherals thought it was Hope. Hello mate. You're on holidays buddy. That's fun isn't it? <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, gorgeous girl. Miss Red. No. Good girl. Yes. Oh, hello. Hello. Ken. Ken. Good boy, my good boy. Good boy. Too excited. <laughs> eh? You get too excited, mate. You're the farm. Oh, good boy. Good boy. He can, he can go sit on his armchair soon. Yeah. He'll totally be like, I've had a morning run. I'm yeah. sitting here for the rest of the day. Bandit's ever done. Oh, he has actually. He used to do it to Wallace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Charlie. It, Charlie. Yeah, but, every, but um, Wallace and Charlie did. Yeah. But other than that, everyone, everyone does, does, him. does that to him. Yeah. He recognises chances as a big boy. He's authority, yeah. <laughs> Chance is like, I like this attention. <laughs> Buddy. Yeah, that was a bit big. Aww. Wanna help? Oh, hello, kickback. Go and help, mate. Chance, chance. Up we go. Up we go. Here, here, go, go, go. Three, three. Hop, hop. Oh. He's got his gear once before. Three chance. Oh, yep. The little one. Chancy boy. Good boy. Aww. Show him the ramp. Show him the ramp. Matilda, Matilda, go girl, that's it, that's it Matilda, go girl, good boy, hello Joey, hello Joey, watch out, we'll go back this way. 
There we go, buddy. Good boy. They were bulldozed everyone off, I think. Okay, come on. Go in. Of me. So it's uh, it's a good one because I did see that there was a question from a member on um, the last video. What just happened then? Joey wanted to play. Oh hello. Hello. Okay, mate. Okay. Joey wanted to play fight with me and was jumping up and biting my sleeve, and Lily came over and. She did a little air snap and I just put my hand in front of her face as if to say, you know, stay out of it. And uh, and then she did another half-hearted one. I just did the same thing, like, I've got this covered, but she's defending me. You know, she's, she's going into protection mode. Um, Which is really typical of German Shepherds. Yeah. So it's like, Riker yeah. did it. It's, um, it's, it's their... Their that's why they're so best loved. quality yeah, that's and so loved that's family. right um, so so uh, uh, there's a member's question oh, yeah. um, and I've just got to remember where it is gee it was a good day this morning okay so this is yesterday's video um, and it was it was when chance I think came out of his room for the first time in the morning when you went on that silent bush walk. Oh yeah. And I believe that Lily barked in his face yeah. when he when he jumped out of or he came out of the door. Mm. And so the members asking at the beginning of the video, Luke reprimands Lily. So often, especially when it's such a well-behaved dog as Lily, I wonder what she did wrong. I would find it very interesting if sometimes Luke could manage a quick explanation of what the wrong behavior was. So possibly um, what Lily did may have been missed. So you could, you could explain what is it that Lily actually did that you, the behavior not, that you it's were not on the field. it's not on video i think it is but you might have to replay it back slowly to really um i, I know what happened I, I can see exactly what happened but uh... so uh, well i'm just saying if somebody i'm assuming that um this member might have missed what lily did wrong yeah um but then i guess so so outline what that was but then explain um if for, if for anybody that might have seen what she did wrong, but maybe they're dismissing it as, well, why why are you picking that up? You know, because um, this was a good example just here mm. of, um, hey, we, we actually, we love those qualities about German Shepherds and especially of Lily, because yeah. it means something even bigger that she is doing that um, for you. Um, but why is it important that you communicate um, this yeah, is so not this is not the time to you know yeah so <clears throat> naturally like we say German Shepherds have very good protection instincts and protection qualities um, but without training to hone that skill and identify uh, you know who needs protecting from who and who doesn't and all the rest of it. Um, they'll just make the decision themselves. So she she obviously knows that I focus on chance a lot. And so she's going into what I call the 2IC role where she's just sort of saying, hey chance, pull your head in, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm telling her not to get involved, I've got it covered. That's all that message from me to her is, is you so don't she, worry about... So she barked in his face? Yeah, so he came running through the crowd. It yep. was a bit of obnoxious, the way he's just ran straight through, but he's excited and everyone else, their energy is a little bit lower. He's excited that he's coming out for the day. Um, and so she's just basically told him to pull his head in, don't come running out like a buff head. Um, but, you know... I don't want 
I don't want her to think that that's his her responsibility because she can't handle that. You know, this is um, something that I've got under control. I'll deal with it. Don't you worry about it. Chopper, hey, no. I haven't seen that before from him. Yeah. Good boy, Dan. Um, so was that Chopper or Tank? It was Chopper. 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 Was a, he was just Mount. Roscoe was doing zoomies and then he stopped and played and then Chopper jumped on the back and mounted him and uh, called out Chopper no and he still stayed there so I had to go and follow it up. And now he's saying sorry. Um... Just quickly, you always have to interrupt mounting, like in these oh, in, in a pack environment. It it will always escalate, you know, especially yeah. on a dog like Roscoe. Roscoe and Chopper and Tank, you know, you don't want them competing for dominance, and it's just going to end bad. Uh, it also sets a precedent that that kind of behaviour, jostling for position, of physical strength, is accepted in the pack, which it's not. Um, you know, I've got a role to play to protect the dog being mounted, that they don't have to react because, you know, then you've got a problem on your hands. Uh, so there's a huge dynamic involved in uh, mounting and why you should eliminate it straight away. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't seen it from these guys yet. Um, and they're just coming up to one year old soon, so it's a behaviour that uh, will most likely start to creep in as they become confident and uh, coordinated and mature mature into an adult dog. Um, but Roscoe knows very well what that means, and he's likely to turn around and uh, give him what for if um, if he let it continue, you know. Um, but at the moment, I think that was a bit of a test behaviour. Everyone was sort of ganging up on Roscoe because he's inviting them all to play and chase him. Um, so it was a bit of a yeah, I caught ya type thing. And Roscoe behaved perfectly. Roscoe did everything he should have done. Uh, he looked at you. Yeah, look at me and be like, come give me a hand. <laughs> or else I'm going to beat him up. Yeah, or I'm going <laughs> to do it myself. But that's what we want, you know. He yeah. knows not to react. He's Chopper's stepping out of line. I've dealt with it. The rest of the pack can see that I've dealt with it. Uh, Chopper showed remorse and wanted to come up and make up with me again. Um, so it's all back to normal. So back but to we Lily. We're talking about Lily. Yeah. And we're talking about Chance, and uh, Chance is a tough case, and Chance is not the type of dog to receive Lily saying, pull your head in, and Chance go, oh, sorry, yes, okay, no worries. So I'm trying to disengage Lily and say, don't worry about that. I've got it covered. So some of the behaviour that is along those lines, you definitely allow. Like for instance, Fredo and well, Roscoe. Allow it with other dogs. They just they they jockey um, uh, chance uh, in the initial, you know, ten five or ten minutes of him coming out each day. Uh, but you know, jockeying a dog and giving them an, a bit more of a um a bit more of a forceful bark in their face is yeah, so very it's, different it's, it's different roscoe and uh Fredo, Fredo, they're letting him know i'm watching I'm, you i'm watching you but I, i'm i'm above you you know i'm i'm higher rank out here and respect it lily's not saying that at all um However, Lily is also being a lot more antisocial in the way that she's doing it. It is a very, um, you know, not a very friendly bark in their face. It is a definite line in the sand. Um, but the other side of the factor is we know that he had an issue with shepherds before, so he's not going to receive any sort of, um, you know, antisocial behaviour from the shepherds like he would one of the other dogs because uh, they're already a bit of an Achilles heel for him. 
Um, he totally ignored it and didn't react to it, which was excellent on his part. Uh, but it was a lot to do with Lily is not that type of dog to be able to earn that respect from Chance. Uh, Roscoe is, Fredo is, um, you know, Lily's definitely more of a um, middle pack member, however, loyal to the pack leader. You know, she she's not, doesn't care about holding any rank position in the pack, um, but she's doing it to impress me or to, to win approval from me. So it's just not a good dynamic to allow that to happen to chance. She does do it to some of the other dogs and I let her do it to the other dogs. So she does it a few times to the Scappy sisters. Uh, they're often out of line. So <laughs> getting a bark in the face is from an older dog to say, um, but know, they're, and they're, re out. they're relentless, you know. They are, they are relentless, but the information that she's giving them is received accurately, you know. Yeah. Whether they take it on or not, they understand what that means. Chance is so uh, novice at his social understanding that he, he just, that flew over his head. He didn't understand that. All he knew was, oh, I'm not allowed to fight back, you know, which is perfect from him. Um, but as his socialization develops, he will start to understand, oh, what did I do wrong there? Why are you upset with me for that? But he wouldn't have thought that at the time, which is what Lily was asking to, to get from him. Um, the Freddo thing, you know, he he's always been um, a top dog. He's always been um, a very high-ranking dog in the pack. And naturally? Naturally, yeah. Like Chance has those natural Chance qualities. Is the same. Yeah, which is why being told by, in his mind, a subordinate to pull his head in doesn't go down well. Um, so a part, he, a part of it, yeah, you're, you're also trying to, like, on, on very simply just protect everybody involved. Yeah. You know, exactly. whilst, whilst there is, like, those complex learning, you know, things between, of, for Chance and for Lily, you know, you are also trying to mitigate any kind of altercation. Yeah. I, I definitely don't <laughs> want Chance to react towards Lily. Lily won't be able to handle that very well. Um, I don't want that to put Chance's training back and have a slip up. Um, you know, I don't want Lily to bite off more than she can chew. I don't want her to stress out about trying to control a dog that she's not able to control. Um, I want her just to relax and enjoy the day and be a pack member and I've got it under control. Uh, I want the rest of the pack to see that I've got it under control. I don't want, you know, dogs think taking on themselves to go righto. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure you're in line today or whatever. So a simple run through the pack and a dog going back 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 and then turning it back. It's a lot more to it than uh, just a simple bark at another dog without any contact. Yeah, I guess um, the other thing is that um, the dogs very much understand in that moment that it is directed at them and the behavior that they, you know. From who? Well, in that instance, when you say, um, Lily cut it out. Yeah. She knows that you're talking to her and she also yeah. knows what the behavior is that you've just marked. Uh, there's no confusion on what you're asking of her when you're communicating to her at that moment. Yeah, no, she, she totally understands. But uh, another, you know, underlying message there is, like I said before, I didn't get around to explaining it, but it was an antisocial greeting from Lily when me as pack leader, I'm saying to welcome Chance into the pack. Like I'm saying, mm. no, no, we're not, we're not isolating him here. He's joining in. So, you know, I'm telling her to stand down as if to say, there's no confrontation there where we're doing this together mm. um, but they do naturally feel that you're there and we're here um, you know and like we've said many times before they haven't accepted chance because they know what he was like um, 
there's a few dogs that are starting to accept him. Um, you know, Barney has, Maggie has. There's a there's a, there's a couple that have started to engage in him, and uh, he's starting to receive that quite well. Like before, with the licks and stuff with Bandit, I could see that he was like really taken aback and. Oh, I've never had this before, mm. you know, and he's starting mm. to enjoy it. He was wagging his tail. He was letting it happen. You know, it was a nice moment for him that he's probably never experienced. Um, so it's, it's again, me as back leader saying, you know, we're including him, not excluding him, you know, which is what Lily was doing. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, you're definitely, just like the mounting, you can't, you can't let them get away with it. You have to mark the behavior. And if what Lily did was a complete disengage straight away, that's mm. the end of it. It's, it's purely verbal. What Chopper did was look at me and keep going. So then you've got to physically go and grab him and say, nope, that's not allowed. Um, so, so marking the behavior is, is definitely something that is all part of communication and being on point with timing and um, making sure that the message was received accurately. Uh, and then you've got, you know, I suppose where- so, so people probably, I guess, like, cause maybe when we talk about these things, you kind of, um, you can see how it probably looks. Um, you know, people see, um, dogs having fun. You know, there's music put to those, those videos. Um, you know, it's only now that we're really talking. I was thinking about it and, um, you know, we, we're discussing a lot of things at the moment. But not very long ago, we literally used to have just clips that were, some. a lot of them were muted and I just put music over them. So, um, but, you know, you how many, um, <laughs> shadow. I mean, how many times do you communicate with the pack? Like you're constantly communicating, but you might, you might be um, saying things like that, like cut it out, Lily, you know, quiet, no, you know, Set warning down, tones, you know, all kinds off. of things yeah. like a couple hundred times a day. Easy. Yeah. And, um, and the thing with that is, um, that's what it takes to manage a pack like this. So there are 20 dogs plus holiday dogs or other dogs that are coming through. Um, and you just have to remember that these 20 dogs are, a lot of them are made up of, you know, dogs that, you know, some of them have serious pasts, but some of them were just simply, um, didn't, weren't socialized, you know, um, Who's that? Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> oh, Lily Gorko, you don't expect them that, were you? <laughs> <clears throat> it, it, like, even if you're not, um, like, actively doing formal you know, uh, uh, training classes with the dogs now, it is all about this, where they're socializing and you're communicating with them. Um, it's a lot of work to manage this pack, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's a constant, you're giving constant guidance, which is what you'd sort of call this. Um, Even if they were, let's just, pretend um even if they were 20 to 30 dogs of the daycare standard of socialization right yeah. which is very high level of socialization like you you can't you never left i know you never, <laughs> you never ever left that always, daycare pack dogs, yeah. um by, by themselves without guidance so this is a very similar, yeah. like, it, it's situation in the sense of even just the sheer number of dogs yeah. together, they can't be left. They have to always be, yeah. you know, guided and managed. That was an interesting uh, thing that just happened then. I'll just quickly point it out. 
Uh, Roscoe had the squeaky ball mm. and Tank came over to get it and Roscoe gave a little growl and Tank rolled over on his back and, you know, asked for forgiveness. Fredo came over to get it, Roscoe gave a growl and Fredo went, mm -mm, grabbed the ball and then so Roscoe laid over on his back. <laughs> He's like, you win. Yeah, good boy, mate. Um, they're, and in that sense, they like Roscoe and Fredo are an equal match, but um, Roscoe respects Fredo. Yeah, but this is this is purely um, Fredo's game. Fredo did the same thing to Roscoe that he does to Chance when he comes out of that room. You know, he's saying, "I'm in charge here. You know, if you're ready to challenge me, I'm ready to go right now." Um, and through the training and through the fact that, you know, these guys aren't allowed to react. Um, and it's not until they get the freedom to run around that now managing, okay, where's that relationship going? Um, you know, he wins the mental battle early on. It's like, I'm, I'm top dog. Um, if he did have an issue with Fredo and wanted to take that position off him, that would have been a very different scenario there. You know, it would have been more of a standing his ground and that's when I would have stepped in and managed the situation. <laughs> but, um, you know, this is where the natural pecking order starts to fit in. It's not like once they reach that level of um, rank in the pack where, like Fredo, and I'm also going to refer to, like, say, Wallace, Wallace and Charlie, yeah. you know, and also Tilly. It's like they retain it for life. Like, so even when they get old and sick, they're still very well respected. Yeah. It's because there's been no power vacuum. Because I'm still in charge. It would be different if uh, I wasn't part of the picture and Fredo was top dog. As soon as he started showing weakness and old and injury, they would. They would kick him out of that position. Okay. Um, but it's because there's no power vacuum, I've still got control, I'm yeah. still in charge. Because everyone still respected Wallace him. even when he was, you know, literally yeah. on death's door. But it, but it definitely, it definitely um, still has a lot to do with the way that we interact with Wallace and those other dogs. Um, you know, we definitely wouldn't allow other dogs to mount Wallace, which he used to get a lot happen which is just what happened then with Roscoe it's like they try they it on try him it. because they know that he but is then us as the pack leaders would come in and say cut that out yeah you know, and we're, we're giving a um, you know a, a position to dignity yeah. pass to Wallace and be yeah. like you know you, we got you covered mm. you, know, you don't don't have to worry about it don't fight your battles I'll fight them for you yeah um, hey what's this yeah I thought so Boy. Um, so and we would do we would guidance. do the same for Fredo. Of course we do. And Tilly, well, as they age, you know, we already do for Fredo. The shepherds used to hassle Fredo big time in the pool as they were coming up. They would try to, you know, jostle for him to get when he was going for the ball, and we've had to do training with them to tell him to back off and not not to compete with him, and you know, all that kind of stuff. But without that, they would naturally start to overtake him based on the fact that he's old and he's slower and he's going to get mm. worse with injury. And, um, so, you know, the reason why they hold the position forever is because we allow it. We, mm. we, we protect it. Yeah, okay. Um, because at the end that of the day, sense. the dogs, the dogs are naturally that position, but they're just getting old. So we're allowing them to retire with that rank. Mm. You know, we don't want them to feel demoralised and, you know, don't want them to feel degraded or, or worthless because they've got an old and, and can no longer defend the position. Like, that's rightfully theirs. They were in their prime. They, they earned that position. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, it's just like the natural selection of when Tilly used to worship Wallace and Charlie... And then when they passed on, Tilly naturally elevated to that position and she switched and took on that attitude, didn't she? Mm. Um, and so she naturally felt, okay, 
I'm um, um, 2IC now. Let's, this is the role that I know um, how to play because I learned from, from Wallace. Mm. But uh, if we go back to apply that scenario, and again, that's another reason why I don't want Lily to start to play that game because Lily's not naturally that position. Um, she will say that she is to the other dogs, but she won't convince them. And so they won't give her uh, that position because she's, she's not that dog. She's protecting me and she's protecting um, what she feels is her role. Um, but she is a little bit of a, um, an overthinker and stresses out about a few things and uh, is, not, is not naturally that strong alpha mentality. She, um, but she's very good at you know, doing what, what she knows best, which is, okay, I'm a shepherd, I need to protect what's valuable to me. Um, Mm. Yeah, it's a huge dynamic in it, isn't it? Simple question, what is this about a half an hour talk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could talk all day about dogs. That's what we do. We could probably talk about any topic all day, <laughs> you know. Um, and we love talking about the dogs, so... I don't know, if people want to listen and they want to ask a question, then, you know, we're happy to to answer them. But it's one of those things, like if you can understand it and you can picture all the different dynamics and all the different personalities and all the different uh, interactions and like, there's a lot that I just observe and then, you know, understand about their own dynamics and then there's a lot that I control and then there's a lot that, you know, I manage. Um, it is all quite technical and although there's some things that you allow to naturally find pecking orders there's other things that you know you don't want to allow cheating their way to the top or, or underhanded tactics or anything like that you know you'd like the mounting or any sort of bullying or anything like that uh, it's all got to be fair it's all got to be earned you know there's rules in place and that's where I come in and say these are the rules that we play by um, but yeah, it is very interesting. This is what I do every day with these guys. And um, like I, I know where all their levels are as far as respect for each other, respect for me. Um, you know, everyone's got their own different dynamic. Look at this one here. Cutie pie. Yeah. Cutie does, pie, cutie pie is a very interesting one. She, we could probably talk for yeah. a very long time about cutie pie because I, she's, she's probably not exactly what everyone would think. Um, I, th I think people, I, I take that back. You, I think that people definitely think that she's a very tough dog. But do you want me to tell you who cutie pie thinks she is? Who? Greta. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of people out there who actually think that she thinks that she's she like totally Fredo. She totally thinks she's yeah. Fredo. It's like, it's me and you versus the world, Fredo. Let's go. We, I, I probably miss a lot of her interactions and it, and it, and it probably just comes off a lot of, of just cute, cuteness, you know, for yeah. cutie pie. But she's a serious little pug, isn't she? Yep. She, um, just, let's just quickly quickly because we can do another video on cutie pie let's quickly delve into the pandora's box of cutie pie <laughs> but let just just quickly we could touch on the dynamic between cutie pie and those three big german shepherds yeah like let's just stop you, for a second you, and think about three german shepherds if there's <laughs> if there's a, a reference that i can give that would accurately describe their relationship if anyone's seen the movie Kung Fu Panda <laughs> and there's the um, one finger technique that he teaches yeah. where there's this huge big bow and he just grabs by the pinky and, uh, and they're completely disarmed and immobilised. That's what she does. The big shepherds come over and they're huge compared to her and all she does is just jump up, just give a little fight on the hold of their corner of their lip and then the shepherds turn on their back and scream. Let me go. 
Thanks, it's hard, let me go. Thank you by seeing me grunting in her ear. Yeah, that's right. Respect my position. <laughs> Where did you learn this kung fu wizardry? <laughs> She's got a couple of um, these these magical points. Yeah, I was going to so say. So the, the, the lip is yeah. one. The, the lip's the finishing move. Yeah. But the the you know. I think the um under un, the arm under the armpit one. is. Yeah, she knows. Oh, she, knows the she is. She's she's quite incredible, actually. Yeah. So and the mental battle, I talked about Fredo winning the mental battle. And I talk about when I teach people how to dog train, it's all about the mental battle as far as me and them. And you've got to, you've got to win that um, and earn it. She's earned it from the shepherds right from the beginning. Mm. They've never had it over it. Even though now they know that they are so much bigger and stronger, they can't, they can't beat her mental game. No. She is, she's on point. Yeah. Uh, and I, we have probably should throw into that um, the two Staffy sisters as well. Yeah. Because they are, um, like you just, you have to think about it for a minute. Like we're talking about three, three fully grown German Shepherds and, and two very tough, relentless Staffies. And Cutie Pie has them all under her little paw. A spell. Yeah. She's the boss. Yeah. Yeah, she is. And I guess maybe that's a good point just to say, in that situation, she's been doing it since day one. So she's been, you know, um, like... the advantage that they've grown up as They puppies. were puppies. And um, there is some of that that you have to allow for, for cutie pie survival. Yeah. Because if knew that was you were to correct that... Of cutie pie, take away that. she would have no hope of surviving. Really, let's yeah. be honest. She she has to have that mental game. Yeah. So Barney, for example, Barney came. She, he was always already much bigger. He loves cutie pie because yeah. cutie pie plays this game with him. <laughs> um, but he doesn't take it seriously. But he doesn't. He, he he just goes like cutie pie will be giving it to Barney, saying <laughs> I'm in charge, and yeah. Barney goes. You're so cute. Yeah. yeah just like, she gets I'll, I'll really frustrated. He doesn't buy it. Because he, he came in at six or seven months old. Yeah. So she didn't have that upper hand of, you know, because the, yeah. the shepherds and the staffies, the staffies were here from 14 days old, I think, and the, and the shepherds were born here. So Cutie Pie started from day one, you know. Mm. Uh, but Barney. All the staffies were younger. I they were five days old. Uh, their eyes weren't open yet. Oh, oh, I thought they were maybe 10, 10 days. Yeah, it's very, I mean, goodness, yeah. what is it? Somewhere between a week were, and two weeks they old. Were small <laughs> yeah. So, but Barney, um, he, he, it. he laughs at her. <laughs> um, but yeah. Interesting dynamics. There's plenty of them. There's so much, isn't there? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and at the moment, um, you know, Nevaeh is trying to find where she fits. Mm. Uh, same with Tank and Chopper. They're, they're going from puppies that are just happy to come along to now starting to figure out, you know, where, where do we stand? Mm. Um, because Tank, Tank's trying to not, not do anything, but he's trying to win over Banjo and Banjo's having none of it. Um, mm. And because you know, Banjo for everybody, like, um, you know, he is the, the bigger male of the German Shepherd trio. Mm. And he is coming of age, I guess, or, you know, yeah. co coming so he's, into he's maturity. Going through that maturity level where um, he's going from puppy to adult. And he's recognising that uh, Tank's a younger dog, but he's doing the same thing as Cutie Pie's doing, and he's just asserting his position as if to say, you're not my equal. You know. Mm. Um, so, um, just for everyone at home, though, that relationship is something that needs to be more heavily managed. Correct. Because it can be a dangerous dynamic. Yes, yeah, so I, I step in a lot with that one. 
because uh, for one, Banjo is not an adult dog yet, and so therefore he's not experienced that communicating effectively without it escalating. Um, so I have to step in a lot with that one. Um, <clears throat> so at the same time, you don't want Tank to learn the hard way that, um, like this is a more professional way to do it, where you've got a dog sucking up to him and all you're doing is not responding. So Matilda, Matilda's lying on her back. Yeah. She's trying to be as small as possible, licking Roscoe's yeah. face. But if you notice, all Roscoe did was give the body language of, no, no, I'm in charge. You, I'm not, uh, you can't play with me like this. Uh, and that straight away Matilda gave him that respect. But Benji doesn't know how to do that just yet. He'll get it, he's just a young dog. Um, but at the moment, Banjo's still discovering how big and strong he actually is. And he's, he's quite a strong dog. Um, so, it's just the fact that he's, that he's got an adolescent dog and a, and a big puppy. Um, it's just gonna be managed a bit better. Left to their own devices, it'll, it'll escalate and get out of uh, get out of hand. Yeah. Here we go. Look. look. Mm. Yeah. Did you see the cutie pie here? Mm. Cutie pie just had the, the one finger technique. Rosie Rosie came over to play with cutie pie. Yeah. And then cutie pie just went. Whoosh, <laughs> and she just went. Started. Uh, I personally just get a bit nervous in those moments. Because, um, Chances there. just from, ex you know, we've had a few too many experiences where the shepherds, you know, make a move or a sound or, you know, and, and Chances taking yeah, advantage he, he, of he that. definitely noticed it. Oh, yeah, I, like, because I can read him. I can see that his, his, um... Spidey senses are heightened <laughs> and I just go into, oh gee, yeah. you know, I usually am pointing like this, Luke, Luke, are you watching? <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's, he's interested, he saw it, but he's not showing the killer eyes that he used to show. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, I, I do think he's doing great. I just, I guess I'm a bit like Rosie, I'm feeling. A little traumatized by the the um ah is it goodness yeah. they never die these things um right well I think we deviated about four different times off the original question there. Hmm. But I uh, hope you found it interesting. He's big. Quite dark, hasn't it? Yeah. 
King of the farm at one stage. He still is king of the farm. Yeah, but when he's, he's here. Got, but these guys don't know it. Oh. Yeah, but you 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 protect that role for him though. Yeah. Everyone sees it as soon as they come inside him, he's got like a prime armchair. <laughs> How did you get that seat? He's like out of my way. Yeah. You're blocking the seal of his. Well, the other one will be, you know, the dogs go outside to go to the toilet. And I see that the shepherds have just gone and lay down outside and haven't gone to the toilet. And they're like, want to come back in? I'm like, no, go to the toilet. The bandit comes just straight up to the door and every human is trained just to open the door for the bandit. <laughs> he's, uh, he's got Chris worked out too. Yeah. Goes to the kitchen door. Chris, let me in. What are you cooking? She's like, I'll come in, bandit. <laughs> so hang out in the kitchen. Yeah. What, uh, what leftovers you got here for me? Yeah. You, you, you little cutie, you little cutie for cutie. Yeah. And you're cute too, Miss Red. Yes, 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 of course. Of course you are, of course you are. If you, if you, um, yeah, you can, yeah, I can send you a link and it will just prompt you to put those details in if you want to do that. I've started treating uh, two of my dogs with um, EBD oil. Do you want me to trial bandit on it as well? Do you respond to it? Not really, no. Um, but I ended up getting some and so I've tried a couple and Chili, our red healer, she has she the same, she's limping everywhere. Uh, she's been on for about a week now. Uh, or maybe a bit more actually. So it is, it is showing that it's doing all right. But um, if you if you want me to, I'll trial him on it while he's here and see if it makes a difference. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It's all. It's all. Um, but I. I think. Um, Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. We've we've changed we've changed the system now. They don't sit there. They're in a they're in a like a really hard uh, barrel now. They can't get into because uh, it was a bit too crazy. Oh, the other thing that I've got for the dogs as well, sorry, is um, some collagen powder, which is supposed to be really good for joint and and muscle. Do you want me to put him on that as well? Yeah. Um, yeah.
Okay, yep, yep, all right. Right, okay. And they're the four, those four are obviously ready to go. Have they been defrosted, those four, or? Okay. Right. Until it gets destroyed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. No worries at all. Thanks, Diane. Okay, bye. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you do? Awesome. And is it going well? Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much, much more manageable than the young bandit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. Ah, uh, but then they learn very quickly that there's no, no threat there. Yeah, we often get them that they're, oh my goodness, how scary is this? And then within an hour, they're like, oh, they're not coming. But that's all, that's all good. I'm glad that it's all working out. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any issue with it. Yeah, it would just be a case of a normal introduction and then management. That's, that's totally fine. But yeah, too easy. All good. No worries. Um, I'll let you know if there's any dramas. Otherwise... Um, Chat to you soon. Thanks, Dan. Bye. And it's got a little sister called Bubbles. Oh, cute. Little Spoodle that they rescued. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Apparently, she is a lot more manageable than what Bandit used to be. Because <laughs> I don't know if anyone remembers, but um, I met Bandit as a training client. When he was just six months old. Six months old, he was a, uh, a very cheeky, outspoken boxer puppy. And what is it? He'd be seven or eight now. I think he's, I think he's coming up to eight, yeah. Well, he's November, wasn't it? No, he, his birthday's gone. It was back in October. October, sorry. The end of, not long ago, we, only a couple of weeks we, ago. We do it in November because that's our Halloween. Uh, Halloween week, week yeah. We'll do it later, yeah. Mm. Because it was all our originals had um, the similar birthday. Yeah, um, yeah, it was yeah. Tangerine, Charlie yeah. the Wheaton, Charlie. Uh, Bandit the Boxer. Yeah. And, uh, and how's Bandit liking his new sister? Oh, Bandit's fine. He's, he's good to go with any of that. There's, there's yes. no issues there. Yeah. But it was more so I was asking how's Bubbles going. And apparently she's so chilled out. <laughs> just wants to go for a run walk and do a poo in a wee and then she wants to snuggle with yeah. uh, you know, bandits. Um, oh, bandit boy. Not like this, buddy. No. Not like this, buddy boy. <laughs> <laughs> he wants some dock diving, some lure coursing. Yeah, he Exactly when to get a one on one time. It's when I'm in the morning putting my shoes and socks on. Hey. Listen, Mr. Jealous. Listen, Mr. Jealous boy.
Hello, Bennett. You ready to check out the armchair, mate? We'll have something to eat and then go for a swim. Get Lily in the pool. Jacket for Lily today. No life jacket for Lily today. She is very relaxed and calm in the water, and she was starting to get a bit lazy yesterday with the life jacket being so buoyant. And I loosened it off a few times, but she still is. Uh, have a look at Ben. Uh, I'll have to go get him one. Um, so we'll see how she goes. I'll support her and then uh, make sure she doesn't overexert. And then if she's swimming well, then I'll, I'll let it go, but, uh, no, Jack, come on, darling. Naturally buoyant. She's not using those back legs, anyway. Oh. <laughs> Inside? Good. Mm. See so you do that again, darling. Yeah, hi. Oh, she's sitting on the back. She's not even kicking her legs. Yeah. So I was thinking like her back is. How are you so buoyant? They only do that when they've got the jacket on. is a natural buoyancy vest. It's magical hair. Alright, let's kick those legs, Lily. Kick, 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 kick.
That's right there, it's <laughs> It's like no dog I've seen.
that. Good girl. There you go. Good girl, darling. He doesn't want to swim. He doesn't. Do you want to go for a swim? Oh well. He's just happy hanging out. Oh, dang. Ollie, he just jumped from there to there. As he closed on himself. On yeah. The oh. <laughs> Bend it. No more of that, mate.
helal. Helal. Helal bari.
story and 